it's a remarkable uh, evening tonight. Uh, remarkable to be with so many friends uh, that have helped this cause for the last uh, 12 years. Started by uh, Wayne and Lynn Hammersley with a vision of doing something important. Uh, part of what we've done with Northwest Autism, we've taken on some large projects. And let me go through the four projects and announce the fourth one tonight. The first one is uh, 10 years ago, when autism was not seen as a medical condition, we decided to bring the best and the brightest universities and researchers together with a think tank. We published papers, we worked for three years to provide the foundation for the medical protocol for autism, and it was a $70 million uh, project that was raised by government money. It was taken over by Autism Speaks. Uh, Gleason Aiken was one of the co-founders with me, along with uh, John Dehoney. And one of the things I remembered is when one of the researchers said, I don't want to talk about this as a vision because it's hard. And the, the, the idea was don't wimp out on the vision. Manage the expectations. Things are hard. And it took 10 years. And the person who was with us at Mass General uh, that helped us on this project became president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, and they published the Medical Protocols for Autism two months ago and established it. The next project is we uh, decided to bring together the top gastrointestinal people, gastroenterologists, and we formed a protocol published in pediatrics of how do you treat children with gastro, uh, gastro disease. And we were incredibly fortunate to have Dr. Matt Riley work here in the Northwest, went back to Harvard, and actually worked on the protocols. This publication has caused gastro uh, projects to begin all over the world, and it's quite remarkable. The other one that is being published uh, with the uh, coordination of Dr. Margaret Bowman from the Ladders Program in Harvard is how do we recognize infants at the age of one? We can with microgestures before they have any noticeable signs of autism, and how can we intervene, and how can we prevent autism from happening? The pilot program done by one of our board members, Doreen grand Pache, took 35 one-year-olds who were high risk, intervened with intense ABA and medical treatment. At the end of the period of three years, not one of them became autistic, and the average IQ, the average IQ is 120, our new friend here demonstrates autism may not be a regressive gene. Autism may be the ability to go ahead and, and be able to redirect it. Not one out of 35 became autistic. This is an exciting study. We expect this will be published in pediatrics. This is the fourth project, and it's a huge project for us. It's called P2Y, Perception to Inf Preconception to Infancy. It is based on the fact that we have an opportunity to redefine and shift the paradigm for beginning six months before pregnancy to two months after infancy. What effect will that not only have on autism, but all chronic disease conditions? Uh, this next chart here that you're going to take a look at shows the, the difference in the last 50 years. We've gone from primarily infectious diseases uh, such as uh, rheumatic fever and hepatitis and tuberculosis. These are all declining very sharply, but look on the right-hand side. These are all autoimmune-related uh, disorders, disorders that have happened since 1950 and exploding in the numbers. The next page talks about what happens once a woman gets pregnant. There's a 31% chance she will have a miscarriage. Half of the people don't even know they have a miscarriage. It occurs during the first month. 31%. 12% are preterm births, but then after birth, all of these other conditions are all risk factors. Autism is now 1 in 50, but, but for boys with ADHD, it's 1 in 5. If you total all of those up, the average is 40% of the children by the age of 5 will have a chronic health condition, 40%. So if we add these together, it means from the moment that a woman becomes pregnant, the chance of having a healthy child by the age of 5 is 17 percent, is 17 percent. What has happened? Okay, that's what we took a look at. Uh, we saw that autism is increasing in one in 50. However, in the last two years, uh, groups of scientists, including Phil Lundgren of Mount Sinai, have identified that 60 percent, perhaps, 
of all of the causes of autism occurred during pregnancy with toxicities that were never there 50 years ago. He went ahead and with some very incredible science, they took a look at the organophosphates, the organochlorines, the lead and the mercury. We once thought that the womb was a sacred place, right, Melanie, that could not have chemicals intervene into that development. We now know from an initial study that was done, next slide, with the Environmental Working Group, where they took the core blood of babies after birth before any contamination, compared that to the toxins in mothers, and found that 100% of these chemicals were getting through to mother. It was the equivalent of women smoking two packs of cigarettes a day, two packs of cigarettes a day. The pediatrics then went ahead and worked with the CDC, and I talked to the director of the CDC on this project, who is their epidemiologist. They took thousands of women and did the same study and found the same results. 99% of the women were so toxic that it would damage their babies. 99%. We have a significant problem. Pediatrics went ahead and de detailed not only the toxins in mother's womb, but also the toxins were found in the baby and they were identical. This was published in pediatrics and went to every single pediatrician in the country saying, we have a huge problem and this is where these chronic diseases are coming from. Next, let's just go with a preterm. What happens with a preterm baby? We're looking at 520,000 in this country, 8.2 points in lowered IQ, 26 billion a year, $50,000 in medical cost per child, a 10 times greater chance of learning disorders, 80% chance of cerebral palsy, 40% increased chance of dying during their lifetime. Let's just take one of the toxic factors, aspartame. In a study in Denmark with 60,000 people, one Diet Coke per day while the woman is pregnant increases the preterm chances by 18%. Four cans per day increase that by 72%. Next. This totally, with chronic diseases and pregnancy problems, is a $500 billion a year problem for this economy. Total Social Security costs are $600 billion. So there was a study done in 1990. It's in England, what they did is they took 367 couples, and they found that these degrees of problems occurring during pregnancy, miscarriage of stillbirth, and low weights, they put them on an incredibly low toxic diet and high nutrition diet, and look what happened on the next slide. Miscarriages out of 327 births, zero. Stillbirth, zero. Low weight malformation, zero and zero. This created a lot of controversy in England because nobody knew how that made any sense. Next. But we have been taking a look the last two years at a number of enterprising doctors that have used the same protocol, seven or eight doctors, and we're doing a retrogressive study. Over 1,000 births getting exactly the same results, all with high-risk couples, all with high-risk couples. We did a think tank and brought one of these doctors, Dr. Berger, to Portland, and we took a look at the protocols and we're replicating. We've also brought in people from Duquesne University who are experts at measuring the blood levels of toxicity in women so they'll know exactly what the levels they have. This is the face of autism around the world. It is so difficult in second and third world countries. Many of these children are not cared for at home, but they're tied to cribs and institutions. Unless we start working on reducing the number of chronic conditions, this is the face of autism with literally, and I've been in these institutions, you are forever changed by seeing 3,000 children in dark rooms tied to cribs. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a number of population studies. We're going to go ahead and create a dialogue. This is a very unique approach to it. We're working with the leading company with 3D visualization on websites. We expect to have 3 million people a year come and take a look at the protocols, the population studies, exactly how to do it. On the next slide, we're going to be creating interactive booklets for parents. So the idea is a goal. A goal is simply a dream with a deadline. Within five years, this is going to affect one million healthy babies, one million safe pregnancies, 
and for that, the savings on those births from chronic diseases is $50 billion. We start with not wimping out on the vision. The vision is, collectively, we can bring this globally as a solution. This is the organization that thinks like this, and we really appreciate the kind of help and cooperation people in the room. Thank you so much.